Today, I'll be presenting on forecasting and analyzing the spread of diseases with AI. My name is Nidhi Parthasarathy, and I'm a rising sophomore at Lindbergh High School from San Jose, California. I'm passionate about technology and particularly its applications to helping people and making a difference. I've also developed multiple apps for Girls Who Code, the Technovation Challenge, and Magic Mentorship programs. Recently, I've been exploring the applications of AI and ML for social good, to improve human connection, and for global health. I'm also active in the USA Computing Olympiad and placed silver last year. And outside of school, I am passionate about dance and service, and I love to hang out with my friends. Today's talk is going to be structured in three parts. I will start off by introducing AI and its dramatic impact to global health. Then I'm going to focus on one specific application to AI to predict diseases, specifically COVID. And I will end with a discussion of future opportunities and how you can help. Okay, so let's get started with AI and global health. So what is AI? AI is the branch of computer science that aims to simulate human intelligence with machines. From Netflix recommendations to Alexa and Google search, autonomous vehicles and even spam filters and email, AI is really everywhere. But AI doesn't just impact your TV and search recommendations. AI is transforming the medical world as well. Let me give you a few examples. AI can revolutionize the space of medical health records, allowing for customized patient experience and increased efficiency compared to manual EHRs. Several researchers have also used AI for computer-assisted diagnoses and treatment, catching health issues that were otherwise not clear for human, to the human eye. Even more exciting, we can imagine a world where surgical robots and intelligent prostheses, all di driven by AI, can offer enhanced precision, flexibility, and control in minimally invasive operations. There have also been several other interesting emerging applications of AI as well. For example, AI-driven chatbots can be very effective um, in helping with mental health and depression issues. Wearable devices like smartwatches can provide an early warning signal for underlying health issues using AI. Moreover, AI has been used to study brain activity, and this can help prevent seizures and even treat epilepsy by predicting the electrical channels to light up during a seizure. Another popular use of AI recently has been genome sequencing to help understand the origin, um, behavior, and structure of variants of viruses like COVID-19 or SARS-CoV-2. Finally, image analysis with deep learning has also been able to predict and identify underlying molecular alterations and other tumor types. Now let us deep dive into one specific exciting application of AI, namely forecasting diseases. AI in prediction helps in two major ways. First, it allows us to find hidden patterns that can predict the growth of disease. And second, it allows for much better accuracy and speed compared to human approaches. Now, why don't we take a look at just how good this AI can be? MIT recently created Mirai, an AI that predicts the risk of breast cancer based on mammogram results and other risk factors. MIT's model was twice as good at identifying future cancer diagnoses than the current clinical standard and showed similar results across all demographics. Another example, the Mayo Clinic designed an AI that could detect heart disease and treat strokes faster. They applied the AI to screen for left, left ventricular dysfunction in people without noticeable symptoms. The AI screening tool had a 93% accuracy, while the mammogram, the previously accepted way of screening, only had an 85%. So can we use these kinds of AI and ML models to predict COVID? I'd like to talk about a project I recently did in this area with two of my collaborators. There were three main parts of our project. The most important part of any model is the data set. Our data set had the deaths, recoveries, and cases for COVID from January 2020 to April 2022. The second part of our project was graphing and analyzing this data with Python. And the last part of our project was trying out a variety of different models to get accurate predictions and many different insights. Let me tell you a bit about the various AI models that we used. 
We used two different ML models for this project. The first was the SVM model, or support vector machines. This is an algorithm that is highly effective in high dimensional spaces and in cases where the number of dimensions is greater than the number of samples. It is typically used for classification, but in our case, we use the SVM model to model regression, as you can see to the left. Simply put, the algorithm tries to make the distance between the extreme ends of the graph to the hyperplane as similar as possible. The image on the left, um, the dotted lines represent the extreme ends, and the black line in the center represents the hyperplane. We also use the second model, a traditional linear regression model, as you can see to the picture on the right. This model is very good at finding the line of best fit. So how did these models perform? Both the SVM and the linear regression gave great results but the SVM model had much better accuracy compared to the linear regression model. The picture on the left shows just how precise the prediction was to the actual reality. You can see the two lines are almost on top of each other. Not only could we predict the number of cases, but we could also use the model to predict various other trends like mortality rates, recoveries, etc. The picture on the right shows one such example, in this case, the mortality rate of COVID over time. We were very happy with how great our models worked out, but we could do a lot more. For example, we could use location data to calculate the risk of COVID exposure, something that Apple and Google are working on together. We can also use medical and statistical data about symptoms to predict the risk or depth of severe issues. Another interesting option is to explore and study the demographic and geographical data to predict patterns of COVID spread and correlations that can suggest preventive measures. You can find more details about our full project at bit.ly slash forecasting COVID-19 and on our blog linked above. Interesting factoid, our project name Isteria is an AI-inspired play on the word Asteria, the goddess of prediction. While AI models can be really amazing, I want to address the ethics of AI and ML. One particular note of caution is when the AI model is wrong. The two biggest reasons this happens happens to do with biases and shortcuts. Humans have many implicit biases, and these biases sometimes get passed on to the AI model. For example, Amazon used an AI model that was trained on their past hiring. What they didn't realize was in the past, they didn't hire that many women. Because of this, the AI thought that being a woman was the reason not to hire someone. This is an example of both how the implicit bias in Amazon's hiring was passed off to the model, and how the model took a shortcut and thought that being a woman had to do with hiring. There are also many social considerations when it comes to AI. What if AI becomes so powerful that it starts replacing people's jobs? These problems can be solved though. Being intentional and thoughtful about AI ethics and in particular focusing on diversity in viewpoints and data sets can significantly help with the problem of bias. I wanna close by addressing where AI and ML will go in the future and what you can do to help. We can foresee many applications of AI and ML in forecasting infectious diseases. In the coming years, we may see the diagnoses of infectious diseases based on quantitative factors such as temperature, heart rate, and respiratory data, as well as qualitative factors such as patient discomfort, nausea levels, etc. For example, at a Singapore airport, the temperature checks are being performed using a thermal camera to help prevent COVID-19 exposure risk to citizens. We can already see the use of smartwatches and smartphones that can analyze location data, temperature, heart rate, and determine if the user has been exposed to COVID and whether they should see a doctor based on their demographics, including their age, weight, and immunocompromised status. Apple specifically has developed technology that alerts your phone if you've been near someone who's had COVID. If you are diagnosed with COVID or some other infectious disease, AI can help come up with paths of treatment based on your body and your immune system. Additionally, it can recommend lifestyle changes to reduce the risk of catching infectious diseases. So what can you do? You can learn more about AI and figure out what you're interested in. AI is such a broad area, and there's so much that can be done from computer vision to robotics to even healthcare. Try to find global health applications that you are passionate about and build your own model to help. There are so many exciting opportunities and the future is really bright. If you're looking for more information, I have listed several references you can follow up. 
I'd like to thank Dear Chelsea for this opportunity to present. I'd also like to thank my teacher, Christian, and all my collaborators with whom I did this project because I couldn't have done it without them. I would also like to thank my family for all their support in my work. And finally, I'd like to thank all of you for listening to my presentation. It is a privilege to present to you all. And if you have any questions, feel free to contact me at nitty.parthasarathy at gmail.com. Thank you so much. Thank mm -hmm. you.